We learned about three object states in our previous tutorial. We learned what is a transient object, what is a persistent object, and what is a detached object. And we learned when an object goes from being a transient to persistent, and from being persistent to detached. And uh, all of this has to do with how the object is being treated by Hibernate. When we do not have an object that's associated with Hibernate, when Hibernate is not tracking a particular object, it's just transient. So as soon as you have a new object, it remains a transient unless you do something about it. Now, once you assign that object uh, to Hibernate and ask Hibernate to save that object, then it becomes a persistent object. And uh, when the object is in the persistent stage, then Hibernate is going to track the changes to this object and it's going to save the changes to the database. And once the session is closed, the object becomes a detached object. So whatever changes happen to this object is not tracked by Hibernate. A couple of tutorials back, we looked at CRUD operations using uh, Hibernate. We had uh, create, read, update, and delete operations being done using objects and using uh, the Hibernate APIs. Now, what was happening behind the scenes was that our object, our uh, entity objects, were actually going through all these uh, different states. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how the states, uh, you know, change from, you know, one state to another as we perform these different operations so that we'll have a better understanding of these three states. Now, let's start with the create. Uh, we did a new uh, object. Uh, we had a user details object, so we need a new user detail object. And uh, the moment we did new, the object that was created was in a transient state. We had not asked Hibernate to save it. Now, when we do a session.save, the same object becomes a persistent object. Now, once we are in this persistent object, Hibernate will keep track of the changes and then it'll update the database accordingly. And uh, once we are done with our action, we do a session.close. And the moment we do a session.close, it moves from being a persistent to a detached. Okay, so this is the flow for a create the example that we saw in our previous tutorial. Next, take a look at a read. Now for a read, we do not do a new, okay? We do a session.get and we get the object depending on the value that Hibernate is, you know, depending on the primary key that we pass to Hibernate, you know, Hibernate pulls up the actual uh, record from the database and then it gives us the object itself. Now, the object that Hibernate gives us uh, as we do a session.get is a persistent object. So by default, the object goes into a persistent state. Now I can do a session.get and get any object depending on the primary key I specify. And once I have that object, I can make changes to that object and Hibernate is automatically going to update the database depending on the changes. We also did a session.update in that tutorial, which is not really required. Uh, by default, the values that we update in, our, uh, in the object that we've got is persisted automatically. We're going to look at the update, the session.update. It's a special scenario that we're going to look at later. But uh, the thing to note here is that the object is persistent by default. When we uh, use the session.get to retrieve the object, you don't have to do any updates as such. The, uh, you know, when you modify the object itself, it gets updated to the database. So persistent, it starts with persistent. And then when you do a session.close, it goes to a detached. There's no transient state here. Uh, we can convert this to a transient state. We're going to look at that in a minute. But by default, if you just get the object, it starts off being persistent. Now, let's look at uh, update here. Now, update is a little bit tricky. Um, we can do an update either by a create uh, flow or by using the read flow. If I you know, do an update using the create flow, I have a new object here and then it's transient by default. I cannot make any updates here. Whenever I make an update, it just updates the object. It's not gonna update the database. But then I do a session.save, it becomes persistent. Now the changes that I make here 
are going to go into the database it's going to you know it's going to trigger an update and then it's going to be it's going to continue the update until i do a session dot close and then the same thing happens here once i do a get i can do an update here as long as the object is persistent it's going to do the update actions and then uh, once you do a session dot close it's going to get detached so update can happen in both of these uh, ways in our example tutorial we uh, we did a read you know we did a session dot get and then we did an update for that doesn't have to be done that way. You can also have a new object persisted so that it gets saved and then you can make changes to that and it can, uh, it also automatically gets updated because it goes into a persistent state. Okay, so now we have seen create, read and update. Now let's have a look at delete. Delete is, uh, this again has two flows. Once your object is in a persistent state, of course this, an object can be in a persistent state either by using a new and a session dot save or by using a get and uh, result in an object with a persistent state. Now this persistent object will go to a transient object state when we do a session dot delete. Now, why is it a transient? Because uh, once you do, a, once you have a persistent object, you have a corresponding representative of that object as a record in the database. Now when you do a delete, the record in the database is no longer going to be there. So there's no point in having the object as persistent because if you make a change here, what is it going to update? It doesn't have anything to update in the database. So what Hibernate does is it automatically converts this to a transient state. Now I can do a session.save and convert this back to a persistent, in which case Hibernate is going to create that record for me. It's the same as our scenario here. If we got this, we got a new and we had an object in a transient state, but it could as well be a persistent object uh, being deleted and moved to a transient state. So no matter how you get it to a transient state, doing a session.save is gonna convert a transient to a persistent. If it was a previously deleted uh, record, it's gonna insert and create a new record so that you know it can have an object in a persistent state and updates can go through. So. That's one way in which a persistent object can uh, become a transient again. And then of course the same uh, thing that we've seen earlier, a persistent can become detached by a session dot close. Okay, so these are uh, the flows that we saw in our previous tutorial. The thing to note here is that, uh, you know, the, the change from transient to persistent and the change from persistent to detached is happening because of the session involvement. The transient object becomes persistent once it's attached to the session and the persistent object becomes detached once it is removed from the session. Now there is this one particular scenario where you would want to move an object from uh, being in a detached state to a persistent state again, which means that the object was persistent somehow and then the session which persisted the object was closed and it became detached. And now we want to attach this object back to the session and make it persistent again. We'll look at a use case when this might be required. 